Some say the Irish invented Halloween, and what they might mean by that is when the Irish emigrated to America and to other places, they brought their customs and their beliefs with them. One of these customs was carving sugar beet and other root vegetables, making a scary face and hollowing it out and putting a candle in it, and this is known as a jack-o'-lantern. In America, this became pumpkins, and this custom came back to Ireland, and now we carve pumpkins in Ireland. Modern Halloween is rooted in the ancient festival of Samhain, a time when the ancient Irish lit fires on the sacred hills of the country, when they believed that the other world opened up and the spirits were around and mingling with human beings. You know, it was a night you didn't go out on if you could avoid it. It was certainly a night that you didn't go near fairy forts. You didn't go near places that were noted for the other worldly because the other worldly and our world were supposed to be very, very close to each other on that night. And if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time on that night, you might be carried. There were several words for it. You might be taken, you might be brought, you might be carried, but they all meant the same thing. If you were out that night, wrong place, wrong time, you mightn't come back. Halloween is still a popular holiday, but what do today's kids think of it? I think Isaac has a favourite part as well, which is Isaac love doing. What's Isaac? Dressing up. Dressing up? And Isaac loves dressing up. I love th thinking of what I'm going to be, showing it to my friends, going trick-or-treating and just all out having fun building it. So, dressing up? <laughs> could be to, to let them know, to, to acknowledge uh, spirits, or it could be to, to disguise yourself, to, to hide from them. So um, that's, that's what we think that tradition comes from, but it's fun as well to dress up, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, it seems clear to me that the future of Halloween is in good hands. Uh, Halloween was always three things. It was fun and games, it was the otherworldly and the practical, this worldly and the otherworldly and the fun and games. They put, we'll say, a flower on a saucer and they get two snails and put down the two snails in the flower and watch them and see what kind of a track they made through the flower. And if those snails, they pick out two of the people in the audience and if the, uh, if the initials that the two snails crawling through the flower could be in any way interpreted as your initials and your initials, you were bound to get married. Yeah, it was a great joke. It was fun and games, that kind of thing, as well as the snap apple and ducking for apples. Look, it was a great night's fun and games. And cheap, cheap. You didn't have to spend any money at all. I had fun. I had fun. But divination basically means attempting to see into the future. And people try to predict who they would marry, what the weather would be like, who would die next in the family, and so on. Now, the Roman Catholic Church frowned on such practices, but this didn't stop people indulging in them. And the most popular form of marriage divination on Halloween that's still with us today is the concealed ring in a barn brack. So we can still go into our local shops and pick up a mass-produced barn brack and it'll have a little ring wrapped up in it. And whoever gets, the idea is whoever gets the ring in their slice of brack uh, is the next person in the family to be married. And my mother said that with travellers it was almost going one further. It was like they put the ring under the pillow and the dream about the person they want to marry. Maybe she was fantasising about, I don't know, Tom Selleck or Clint Eastwood or John Wayne. I don't know what, what the hell was going on back then, but... Why I really enjoy Halloween is because, or Samhain, is because it literally combined every type of community in Ireland. For myself, growing up, it was a bin liner and witch's nails. I don't know if you remember those and the fake blood, because of course all, all bin bags had to have nails and fake blood. So like that was, that was a cheap way of us dressing up. 
So first of all, can we see our witch and our Dracula, please? Now, Tiggy, we just have the two of them here, and basically you've made these two outfits with just a sack that you cut out like this. Yeah, it just has a small piece cut out of the side mm -hmm. so to, to make a collar, and then... This one you just string through here for the witch and turn That's it That's right, back. and then yeah. pull the strings and that tightens it up at the collar. Halloween has many traditions that stretch right back to Celtic times. A long-standing tradition of Ireland is storytelling. People love stories. And Halloween is particularly associated with storytelling. Okay, so one night my great-grandmother's housekeeper left work and she accidentally stepped into a fairy ring. So the fairies tied her to the fairy ring, sang and danced around. Sorry, I just need to Sorry. And she was stuck there all night. They wouldn't let her accident. Next morning, she went She went to work with her clothes and her head full of muck. Crazy story, right? Thanks for the really interesting stories. Yeah. A lot has changed about Halloween, like people setting off fireworks or dressing up as Disney characters or celebrities. But I wonder, what hasn't changed? Listen, no matter how forward society goes, we'll always have those fears, the fears of the unknown, the fears of ghosts, the fears of spirits, souls, or whatever, or witches. We'll always have them. It remains kind of almost intact to the present day. I mean, we still have rituals of divination in Halloween. We still have the Barak, uh, that's a, mar a form of marriage divination. We still have geysers, so we still have people dressing up in, in disguises and going from door to door in Halloween. Um, you, you know, we still have things like, you know, the whole idea of Halloween being celebrated at the home. And I think that's really important this year with COVID because there's all this talk with the COVID restrictions of Halloween being cancelled. Um, so if it has to be cancelled, then we can reinterpret the way we're going to celebrate it this year. And the old Irish tradition of celebration of Halloween, yes, it involved calling to people's houses dressed up, but it also involved a really lovely ritual of remembrance. And that's something that we can reenact this year. And what I'm referring to there is um, at bedtime, what you would do is you would, before you went to bed, you'd stoke up your fire and then you'd arrange whatever chairs you had in your house around the fire. And this, you'd leave out a little bit of food as well. And this was the whole idea of that. After you went to bed, your ancestors, your departed ancestors would come into your home and they'd make themselves at home beside the fire. And, you know, <laughs> this year we can kind of do something similar like that but we can maybe remember the people that we can't spend halloween with and we're out of touch with this year due to the covid restrictions um and you know we're kind of going to be stuck in our homes this year so it'll be no harm maybe thinking about how our ancestors celebrated halloween in the past and how it revolved around home and remembrance and maybe we could um, incorporate some of those customs into halloween this year we'll turn up here let me show you I'm going to put the light on. I carved it this yesterday because um, I thought it would be nice to show you and it was so difficult to carve and it was so smelly. You know, a turnip is not the nicest of, of things, but I've just put a little battery candle into it here now and I'm going to show it to you. Now, here Happy Halloween. And tonight, with the cat locked up and the dog sedated, all around the country the bonfires are blazing. And weeks of covert preparation are going very happily up in smoke. I'm going to knock people's doors and um, throw rotten eggs and water balloons. We might come home at about 12. Will your mummy let you do anything? Well, well, we do some things without telling her. What sort of things? Like pulling off the gate and letting stink bombs. Like we don't tell her that we uh, get the stink bombs. What will you do if the man runs after you? I'd roll over ditches and everything and drains. He wouldn't catch me. Fall in the drain. We say it's only a bit of fun and walk off. 